Hello, I'm Sister Rosemary Greco at Wisdom House Retreat Center in Litchfield, Connecticut. Centuries ago, it was believed that the world was flat, and some philosophers even suggested that the world was a well-managed machine. These stories shaped much of our thinking. While some might still maintain these outlooks, the present concern with climate change is helping us to look at a new way at our universe. Today, there is a new story of the universe, and Dominican sister Miriam Therese McGillis will be speaking to this topic at our Casa Grande Interfaith Institute at Wisdom House on the topic of a change of climate. Okay. Well, Miriam, thanks for being with us. Now, tell us, what can you tell us about this new cosmology and this new story of the universe? Well, um, in a nutshell, it's what we understand from our contemporary scientific exploration of the age, the origin, the nature, the functioning of the universe. You mentioned a little earlier about some philosophers used to think that it was a mechanistic, uh, totally material universe. And actually, that is the heart of the problem. Um, and it stems back to what we might call our old cosmology, simply meaning the story of how the universe came to be and what it's made of and who we are in it. Um, and in, in previous ages, we really believed that humans were separate from, and what distinguished us from the rest of the created world was we had a soul, and other, other creatures did not. Therefore, they were material, and we were spiritual. Mm -hmm. And this is the heart of all of the issues that are plaguing us now as we have moved into the, um, you know, the, the, um, industrial era with its total control over every natural process almost on the planet. Mm -hmm. So um, what the new story tells us is that the universe from the beginning has had a spiritual, non-physical dimension to it. And of course this wasn't known until we went into the realm of quantum physics and went inside the atom and discovered it wasn't matter. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect that is radically different is that we know now that the universe is a unity with itself and has been over the whole 13 billion years of its evolution. So that means if it's, if it's a single acting unit, then whatever it's doing later on, like you know, bringing humans forth with the capacity for consciousness and thinking and acting, then those capacities had to be implicitly there from the very beginning, waiting for the physical complexity to evolve. Miriam, this sounds a little different from God creating everything in seven days. Right. Uh, yeah. Is that the old story? That's the old story, but we have to understand that our ancestors were doing the best they could as they tried to figure out, you know, where are we, why is the universe here, why do we die? I mean, they were asking basic questions that we still ask today, uh, but they had only their unaided senses, you know. Mm -hmm. All this two and a half million years later, as, we, as this generation of humans... You know, we've extended our senses into things like the Hubble telescope and satellite dishes and spacecraft, and we see and experience what they never could have understood. So we're not so much condemning or criticizing the past, it's just that it's no longer adequate to explain the deeper questions of our existence now. Does this new understanding of the universe call for a different type of behavior from us? Totally different. How would, what would that mean? Well, everything in our consciousness now, everything in all of our institutions, education, law, politics, economics, medicine, everything is still premised on this foundational belief that humans are separate from everything else and we could do whatever we want. It wasn't going to hurt us. And, mm -hmm. and then secondly, our real destiny, especially as Western people, was to be liberated out of the universe and and uh, go to another realm that transcends mm -hmm. it. And um, that's put us in a terrible uh, relationship mm -hmm. with the natural world. And it's, it's, <clears throat> it's totally destructive and dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. So we're actually killing the possibility of life to go on by our behavior, and not because we intend to do that. Yes. So once we understand we are a dimension of the universe, that I am the universe in the form of a human, but my true nature is goes all the way back through the 13 billion years. I don't just get plopped in. I mm. emerge out. Mm. And so the way we relate to all other being is, will be totally different than it was in the past when we didn't understand this. Mm. 
mystics seemed to have caught something of that, even though they were centuries before our time, that there is a unity and a spirit alive in the cosmos, that it is a living entity. Yes, yes. Mystics did have an experience of it. They, they had it through some internal, inner state of altered consciousness. And, um, and indigenous people, too, mm-hmm. you know, throughout our whole story on the planet. Uh, but it wasn't something that could be observed. It wasn't something that could be proven. It couldn't be shared in an empirical way the way we can understand that now. Mm-hmm. And that makes the major difference. And, uh, Do you feel hopeful as we move forward in this whole situation we're in with our globe and the concern for climate change and uh, the people that are looking at this, the people that don't believe it really is an issue? Uh, how, how would you feel as we start to move forward on this? Mm. Well, the truth is, um, I'm not very optimistic. Um, and I'm deeply troubled by the inability of the Western nations, especially our own, to move in any kind of uh, uh, significant way towards changing our behavior. We are in such a state of denial and dysfunction and addiction to you know, our dependence on fossil fuels, that it's, it's really hard to be optimistic. On the other hand, I think everything in the universe, everything of Earth, everything, of our instincts of the whole cosmos is, is there to support us. And, um, and if we can tap into that primal realization and energy, you know, I think we can, we will have what we need to get over the hump. Um, but that's gonna it's gonna depend a great deal on our changing our basic fundamental cosmology at, a, at the level needed. Well, let's hope we have the stamina and the spirit within us and the support of each other to to start to make this difference mm-hmm. as we move forward. That's absolutely essential, and the commitment you know that even if we're not successful, we have to be faithful. And who knows? I mean, our faithfulness may open the way for the next generation to be able to do what we are not able to do if it's, okay. if it's that dour. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I want to right. thank Sister Miriam Therese McGillis from Genesis Farm in Blairstown, New Jersey for being with us and for being with us for this entire institute this weekend here at Wisdom House. Uh, you might want to check out our programs for Wisdom House at our website www.wisdomhouse.org and you might also like to take a look at our blog which is at wisdomstable.org Thank you for being with us.